are talking about technology. And I think that we have three major challenges. Technology, jobs, and regulation. And as you know, I'm a techno-optimist. But automated and connected driving will not happen on its own. And we need to provide the right framework to stimulate progress. Car manufacturers are in a worldwide race towards automation, including new entrants from the global ICT industry. Europe needs to win this race. And it's not only for us, it's for you, for the industries, to set the technical and the business standards. That transport is undergoing a massive transformation. And I do believe we can compare it to the steam engine. I mean, that has changed the, and reshaped the way how we understand transport. And I believe this is the new big wave. We live. Jules Verne's vision. I don't think he would have much to do today. We are now preparing a new mobility package to be delivered in two stages. We need to identify the essential actions to ensure that the relevant policies, the legal framework and public support are in place for the rollout of highly automated and connected vehicles. It's not only what we have here today, which is essentially the Commission and the industry, but you have to bring along also the national governments and the cities, and ultimately the citizens. So it's, it's like an onion. You have different layers. We need a cultural evolution in, uh, in uh, public acceptance of this new technology, as always, honestly. Success uh, is not immediate, uh, and of course, uh, better that we count how many lives we save, uh, rather than we uh, underline that one single people died because of automated driving. This is a really exciting area. It is bringing some real benefits, safety, convenience, so that's really also going to give society a real advantage in improving productivity and making transport or car driving more convenient, more attractive. The last part is really uh, people, because I think this technology has to be accepted by people. We have had a number of important milestones recently, as you were referring. We were celebrating the 60th anniversary of the Rome Treaty, and at that moment there was a digital day, and 29 ministers have signed what is called a letter of intent to move forward precisely in the technologies that we need for the future. But also there has been an important um, alliance created between the telecom sector and the car manufacturing sector precisely to work together. It is very, very important because it was a political test on the willingness of member states to work together and the result has been impressive. All of them agreeing to work together, Switzerland and Norway included, and this is really a good basis now for the future. As you know, a rise of cars changed more than our roads. It also changed our society. And I believe this is going to happen again. A number of member states have made changes to their legislation or are working on that, like Germany and France and Finland and Sweden and my own country. And there have been several trials and we're working hard to update European type approval. There's a lot we can learn from the US, for example, from Japan, for example, and from Singapore. Just to give you an example, in Singapore, they are at the moment running a big pilot on connected and automated electrified vehicles for shared use. And that's really exciting because I believe the different revolutions in technology are coming together into a disruptive concept there at the moment that will really be picked up by the community very easily.